The Battle of the Upper Betis was a double battle, comprising the battles of Castulo and Lorca, fought in 211 BC during the Second Punic War between a Carthaginian force led by Hasdrubal Barca, and a Roman force led by Publius Cornelius Scipio and his brother Nias. The immediate result was a Carthaginian victory in which both Roman brothers were killed. Before this defeat, the brothers had spent seven years campaigning in Hispania, which had limited the resources available to Hannibal, who was simultaneously fighting the Romans in Italy. Chapter 1 Background After the defeat of Hosdrubal Barca in the Battle of Detosa in the spring of 215 BC, the Romans had secured their bases north of the Ebro. They then proceeded to win over some Iberian tribes in the region. Both the Romans and Carthaginians faced and put down Iberian tribal revolts. The Scipios received no reinforcement from Italy, where Hannibal had the Romans hard pressed. Due to a lack of support from Rome, the Scipios mounted no decisive operations against the Carthaginians in 214 to 213 BC. In 215 BC, the brothers complained about the lack of Roman supplies and finance for their army. The Roman Senate responded by sending private companies to supply their forces. Two of these merchants, Pomponius and Postumius, turned out to be criminals who cheated the Scipios of their money. In 214 BC, Rome suffered a financial crisis as a result of the strains of war, increasing the Scipios' funding troubles. Despite the lack of any reinforcement or renewed funding, the Scipios went over to the offensive in 212 BC, recapturing Sagintum, which had been lost to Hannibal in 219 BC. Meanwhile, Posdrubal had been reinforced by two armies, led respectively by his younger brother, Mago Barca, and Hosdrubal Gisco. According to Livy, the Romans fought multiple battles against the Carthaginians south of the Ebro from 215 to 214 BC, at Iliturgi, Munda, and Orongi. Livy's chronology is confused and contradicted by Polybius, who explicitly states that the Scipio brothers did not venture south of the Ebro until 212 BC. As a result, most historians consider these engagements to be ahistorical. The Scipios had persuaded Syphax, a Numidian king, to open hostilities against Carthage with an army that had been trained by Statorius, a Roman centurion, in 213 or 212 BC. On the whole, the situation in Iberia was stable enough for Hosdrubal Barca to shift his attention to Africa in 213 212 BC in order to put down this rebellion. Hosdrubal Barca returned to Iberia in late 212 BC, bringing with him 3,000 Numidians under Masinissa, the future king of Numidia. Chapter 2 Prelude In 212 BC, the Scipio brothers captured Castulo, a major mining town and the home of Hannibal's wife Imils. They then wintered at Castulo, and Ilugia. The brothers hired 20,000 Celtiberian mercenaries to reinforce their army of 30,000 Romans. The Roman strength had been reduced by losses sustained against the Carthaginians and Iberian tribes since 218 BC, and the need to garrison the main Roman base at Torico. Observing that the Carthaginian armies were deployed separately from each other, with Hosdrubal Barca's army near Amtorgis, and, further to the west, Mago Barca with 13,500 men alongside Hosdrubal Gisco's army, the Scipio brothers decided to divide their forces. Publius Scipio led Roman and allied soldiers to attack Mago Barca near Castulo, while Gnaeus Scipio took one-third of the Roman army in Spain and the mercenaries to attack Hosdrubal Barca. This stratagem would lead to two battles, the Battle of Castulo and the Battle of Lorca, which took place within a few days of each other. Gnaeus Scipio arrived at his objective first. However, Hosdrubal Barca had already ordered the armies of Indobiles and Mandonius and Hosdrubal Gisco to join Mago near Castulo. Hosdrubal Barca held his ground against Gnaeus Scipio, staying within his fortified camp, then managed to bribe the Celtiberian mercenaries to desert Gnaeus Scipio. This led to Hosdrubal's army outnumbering that of Gnaeus Scipio. Hosdrubal bided his time, avoiding any battles with the Romans. Chapter 3, Battle of Castulo As Publius Scipio neared Castulo, 
he was harassed day and night by the Numidian light cavalry under Mace Nyssa. When informed that Indabilis was moving across his line of retreat with 7,500 Iberians, Publius Scipio decided not to face Mago but to attack the Iberian chieftain, fearing that he would be surrounded by Carthaginian forces. Leaving 2,000 soldiers in his camp under the legate Tiberius Fontius, he marched out that night to launch an attack on the Iberians and, hopefully, evade Masonissa's cavalry. Scipio marched throughout the night and caught Indabilis and his men by surprise in the early morning, and, with a numerical superiority, began to gain the upper hand in the ensuing action. However, the Iberians managed to hold off the Romans in the confused night battle just long enough for Masonissa to arrive. With the Numidian horse attacking from the flank, the Roman assault on the Iberians began to slacken. When Mago and Hosdrubal Gisco arrived with their combined armies, the Romans finally, after a grim struggle, broke and fled, leaving Publius Scipio and most of their comrades dead on the field. Mago gave the Numidians enough time to loot the dead before force marching the army towards Hosdrubal Barca's position. A handful of Roman survivors managed to reach their camp. Chapter 4 Battle of Lorca. Gnaeus Scipio had lost the advantage of numbers with the desertion of the mercenaries. Although unaware of Publius Scipio's fate, Gnaeus decided to withdraw towards northern Iberia after Mago and Hosdrubal Gisco arrived with their armies. The Romans moved out of their camp, leaving their campfires burning, and made for the Ebro at night. The Numidians located them the following day, their attacks forced the Romans to take position for the night on a hilltop near Lorca. The main Carthaginian army, which now comprised the forces of Hosdrubal Barca, Hosdrubal Gisco, and Mago, arrived during the night. In desperation, the Romans tried to create a defensive wall with baggage and saddles, as the ground was too stony for digging. The Carthaginians easily overran this, and Gnaeus was killed in the fighting, most of his army was destroyed. Chapter 5 Aftermath The Roman fugitives fled north of the Ebro, where they eventually gathered a hodgepodge army of 8,000 to 9,000 soldiers. The Carthaginian commanders made no coordinated attempts to wipe out these survivors and then send help to Hannibal Barca. In late 211 BC, Rome sent 13,100 troops under Claudius Nero to reinforce its forces in Iberia. Neither did Nero score any spectacular victories nor the Carthaginians launch any coordinated assault on the Romans in Iberia. With the arrival of Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, the son of Publius Scipio, with another 10,000 troops in 210 BC, the Carthaginians would come to regret their earlier inaction when engaged in the Battle of Cartagena in 209 BC. With the Carthaginian armies in Iberia failing to eliminate the Romans, Hannibal would not get any reinforcements from Iberia during the crucial year of 211 BC, when the Romans were besieging Capua. Chapter 6 